You know, sometimes you read the box and you smell it and you're like, nah, nah, not getting that, not getting that at all. Hello and welcome to another Whiskey Trials. Tonight, this morning, this afternoon, this week, whenever you happen to be watching me, I have a Glen Glasach. It is the Glen Glasach Evolution. Um, this was bought for me by my sister's boyfriend. Hey, Russo. Um, so this is the Evolution, and he bought himself the Revival. Um, they're from up that neck of the woods, so this is a, a space site. Um, and it is non-chill filtered and a natural colour. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I took an amazing picture of the evolution and the revival together. And the the difference was was really nice to see instead of this kind of monotone E150 colour that you know so many of the, the big boys seem to be, be churning out. Um that reminds me actually, I'm just gonna double check. So it's Brown Foreman, Brown Foreman that distilled this one. Um, and I've heard from a few people, not only just the, the uh, Russell, the guy that bought it, he said that when he first tried one of these, he didn't like it. And the dram buster, Mr. Gary Drum, uh, Drams Dunsire, it's a bit of a mouthful, mate, um, he, he said the first time he had these, he wasn't so keen on them. And he wondered if it has evolved at all. And being evolution, let us see. Um, but I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about the revival as well because I tasted that extensively over New Year. It's got a good cork, good noise, decent smell on it. Pour myself a pour myself a semi decent one. All right, evolution. It's all it's all very grey. It's all slightly austere looking for a whiskey. Um, a load of information on the back though. Uh, so Glen Glasgow Distillery, standing on the Murray Firth coast, at the edge of Sandend Bay, uh, is a distillery which lay silent and forgotten for over two decades. Oh yeah, I remember Russell telling me. So this is one that got mothballed. Uh, and then it was revived, and then I think it got mothballed again, and now it's been revived again. Uh, so yeah, silent and forgotten for over two decades, its heritage stretches back to 1875, and the distinctive fruity character of its whiskey is loved by all who discover it. Apparently, well, that it remains to be seen, Glen Glasser. Don't get ahead of yourself. Um, here we go. After being mothballed for over 20 years, production was restarted in 2008. Uh, the first whiskey from this refurbished distillery is now available to single malt Scotch whiskey lovers everywhere. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, um, so let's just read out the box and then I'll see if I agree with it. Um, so colour, crisp, harvest gold. And actually, it's good that these guys have the colour on it and it's good that, you know, it's not, it doesn't have any of the, uh, the colouring in it. So you can see it there. It is... It's quite a pale one, uh, and I think it was the it was the revival that was darker in in the picture that I took. So it's nice to see like a sort of a, a pale gold one. To be fair, um, I'll just check the check the legs on it while it's here. Uh, yeah, not as not as leggy as I thought it might be actually. No, actually, it's not. Yeah, it's not too bad, and they're, they're quite slow to come down. So on the nose, a luscious, syrupy combination of sweet barley, uh, delicate pineapple, and waves of soft, buttery vanilla. And it was actually before I even read the box, um, I smelled it, and I got I got the pineapple. I'm now, I can now, I can now pick out that pineapple-y kind of thing. It's not, it's not like an actual pineapple. It's um, it's like a, 
it's like a pineapple that's been sitting on the ground for ages and it's kind of fermented a bit I think you know that's that's and then a pig comes along and eats it and then the pigs get drunk yeah never watch any nature programs all right I'll shut up so nose yeah I'm getting the pineapple and it does have the vanilla and it is it is very sweet and this is nice but it does have like a I feel like it's there's a there's a spicy pepperiness behind there um Oh yeah, so deeper oak spices and caramelised pear developed and warm the nose. Yeah, you can definitely get all that. It's uh, it's one of those ones. You know sometimes you read the box and you smell it and you're like, nah, nah, not getting that. Not getting that at all. Um, this is one of the ones where you're like, yeah, totally getting it. It's, it's, it's a really, they're really easy to kind of pick out on this one. And I'm not sure if that's because it's it's a fifty percent volume. Um, so yeah, maybe that's uh, that helps the helps the nose a bit. I'm not sure. Okay, so the palate it is robust, white peppery oak floods through crisp green apple and freshly cracked barley. A gentle salted caramel emerges alongside hints of ripe banana and fruit salad syrup. That sounds good. Let's just see. Yeah, I mean, for me, I definitely I got the oak there. Um, I got the oak initially. And then it kind of, and then I kind of finished with the uh, salted caramel and a bit of syrup at the end. But I don't think I got the, I didn't really get the green apple and cracked barley and uh, the ripe banana. But that's what I was saying about the um, on the nose. It's like that really ripe pineapple-y kind of smell. It's funny how it can be. It's great how these these things can be like that. You get the you get a, a ripe uh, pineapple or a like a, a a boozy pineapple that's been sitting on the ground fermenting in its own juices, and then on the taste you get a you get banana. Um, but obviously, you know, I've, I've I've been through this bottle, so I've I've done the journey with the, with this bottle, and it really has it has taken me on a journey. Um, let's just go for it again. So let's just see what the box says about the finish. The finish is a vibrant combination of classic oak spices and delicate soft fruits surrounded by fragrant waves of vanilla pod. So this was an interesting one um, and Russell gave me the choice to either to, to pick this one or the revival. And the revival was much more of my kind of standard, you know, with one that I probably would have chosen normally. And um, yeah, so I went, I went for this one. Um, and I'm not, I'm not disappointed that I did. But I'll talk a little bit about the the revival as well. It was, from what I remember, it was, it was much of a. Uh, a complex kind of sweet one. I think it may actually put a lot of people off because it is very sweet. I mean, it's like borderline liqueur kind of thing. I, I don't think I've I've tasted such a, a caramelly, toffee noted kind of whiskey. You know, it was like on the nose as well. It was like it was like being in a fairground, and I I liked that. You know, because it really it, it it started off you know like I always say it started off the story or the journey for me, so it was like a it was like a candy floss kind of fairground, very lots of sweets and toffee apples and it was that kind of thing that that started it off for me, uh, with the revival, um. But it was it was a very sweet one, I, for me it was it was lovely. I 
you know, I would have, I would have ca- happily taken them both home, you know, if Russell had let me. Um, it was, it was very sweet though. So I can, I can see why potentially that would put a lot of people off, or maybe people would be talking like, oh, they've finished it, and you know, blah blah blah, sherry casks. That's you know just trying to cover up a bad whiskey or whatever. But for me, with the smell of it and the taste, it, it did really take me on this kind of sweet journey, maybe a sort of childhood kind of thing, that fairgrounds and all the rest of it. This one, not so much. This one's... Uh, and I think actually the Revival was... The Revival was a, a 40-something odd uh, percent. And this is a 50 percent. Well, interestingly, it says volume rather than ABV. And there's something in my head that says that that's different, the volume and ABV, but maybe it's not because maybe the V in ABV stands for volume. Man, I really got to look this stuff up. Um, but that's the first time I've seen a whiskey glass, a whiskey bottle that says vol rather than ABV. Anyway, probably no difference at all. Um, but with the with the evolution, yeah, it's 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 not as sweet. You can pick out some different flavours on the nose. There's definitely, there's more wood. But it does still have that interesting kind of sweetness with the pineapple and the vanilla. It is really nice on the nose, and so is so is the Revival. Um, and we were having it at New Year as well, so it was like a, it's like a good time was had, so maybe that helped. Um, Tasting this now that it's at the end of the the end of the bottle. It's good. Um, I don't I don't know how much this was. Like I said, um, I think I know how much I would pay for it, or how much I would want to pay for it. But it's really got some good stuff going on in the nose. Really excellent. I'm struggling right now just to get past the uh, the sort of first bit of wood and then the the last bit of the last bit of uh, sweetness there. I'm just going to pour a little bit more in the glass. I'm going to take a drink of water. And I'm going to dip my finger in it and just put a few drops in the glass. <clears throat> and see what happens. Mm. It's interesting. The uh, as soon as I put the the few drops of water in it, I almost felt like I was initially I was getting like more vapor, but I think less vapor now. And I think I'm getting more the the. Uh, the pineapple has changed more into a pear smell, which is which is really interesting. I'm going to have to do this a lot more with uh, whiskies. I know if you've seen any of my previous whisky trials, I, I tend to drink stuff straight, um, just because you know I can appreciate it that way and I, I quite like it that way. Occasionally, I put water in stuff, um, but I definitely want to do a bit more experimenting um, because I watched uh, um, the Aquavite whisky channel. Um, uh, oh god, I forget the guy's name, but he's he's great, and he talks about um, whiskey tasting and all the rest of it. So I've been I've been trying to kind of bone up on my knowledge on whiskey tasting and and what goes with what, not necessarily what goes with what, but trying different things. Um, and uh, just a quick thing, I'm, I actually want to do my own kind of video on this, but um, one of the things that he said was coffee is a really good palate cleanser, and I kind of experienced that today. Not with whiskey, but in a, uh, with a, with something else. But it was interesting. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely changed the pairs now that I've put the uh, the water in it. That's really interesting. Yeah, I'm getting the much less harshness of the uh, the wood. And for some reason, the kind of sweeter sherry note just came through there a bit more. Um, it was 
it's not I'm not getting the I I'm not getting the green apple at all. I had oh, what did I had recently and it was like a it's like a Granny Smith, you know, a real Granny Smith skin smell. I'll probably have it down the stairs, I'm probably about to trial it, but I can't quite remember what it was. Or maybe that's the, where I'm getting it. I mean the pears, if you can if you take a pear and you kinda of get the skin of a Granny Smith. Yeah, mix with the vanilla. It's pretty good. I think I think it probably has been an evolution. I think if you've had this before, when it maybe first started out, 2008, I think I said, I think it's well worth a go now. It's, it's a decade, over a decade later. Um, you know, like the box says, it's an evolution. It, I, have, I didn't try it when it was in, in 2008. This took me on a, a decent enough journey. Um, the... Revival took me on a nice journey too, and I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I think, do you know what though? The weird thing is, I enjoyed the top half of this more. So I enjoyed the first bit, the first half of this. And then as I got more and more into it, the less and less I was reaching for it, because on the whiskey shelf down the stairs, there was other stuff that I was reaching for. Like I could have reached for one of these, and I was reaching for other stuff. And now, that could be something to do with the evolution of my sort of whiskey tastes. Uh, and maybe going more and more towards um, some of the Talisker likes ones, smokier ones, and, and whatnot. But, no, I still, I still really like my sweet ones. That's my base. That's where I'm safe. And this is good. I would definitely buy this again. I really don't know. Um, what this cost I'm going to have to look that up I would imagine because it's one of these potentially smaller distilleries that this is like a little bit more expensive it could even be in the sort of 40 quid range, it, obviously it's not an age statement um, so it can't be it can't be uber expensive um, but yeah I mean as as non age statements go, I think I think they've they've done a the pretty good job in this one, uh, and it's definitely it's one of the highest ones I've seen ABV wise or volume wise, uh, fifty percent. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it is good. It is it is nice. I'm just I'm just. It's all about the journey, isn't it? I keep saying it, and it really is, and. My first half of this journey was like, I love this whiskey, it is so good. And then the second half was kind of peering off. So it was like, I guess it was like climbing a mineral, climbing a mountain. And the, the sort of anticipation again to the top, you're working your muscles, it's all good. You're like, yeah, this is great. And you get to the top and it's like, amazing. And that's like halfway down. I'm like, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And then coming down, you know, Maybe you forgot some water or you forgot to bring a sandwich and, you know, you're a little bit hungry and you go down the different path and you, you know, you step in a muddy puddle and your foot gets wet. I kind of, that's the kind of journey for me with this one. It, it, it started off so, so nicely and then it's, I'm just not quite, quite enjoying it now as I was at New Year. So perhaps just the. The company and you know the the fact that it was New Year and you know, I was enjoying myself blended to the uh, blended to the uh, the gravitas of the uh, the whiskey. But I'm just pouring myself another little bit because <clears throat> I don't want to I don't want to put anybody off getting this because I I have really enjoyed it and that's one of its redeeming features. Like all the time. The nose is really interesting, so like if you don't care about smelling whiskey, then you're probably not watching this channel anyway. But if you do like to just appreciate a whiskey, and sometimes a lot, or well, a lot of that can be the nose. It's not just tasting it. A lot of it, you can just sit and smell it for a bit, and just you know think about smells and think about what it 
it reminds you of and let it take you on that journey. Um, I think I think smells can actually take you on a journey much more than uh, than tastes can. The smells the smells excellent. It really is. It it does it for me anyway. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely got some legs. So it's got some good oils and whatnot in there. Like it, you know. Like I said, it's not been chill filtered. They're doing the right things. This is this is a. Uh, I don't know if they're independent. Uh, what did I say it was? I keep forgetting the name. It was Brown Foreman, so I don't know if they own anything else. But they're doing the right things, and, and that should be supported. So it's non-chill filtered. It has a natural colour. It smells amazing. And it tastes good too. It just took me on this amazing journey for the first half, and then... I slightly lost a little bit of interest down at the bottom here. But also, you have the Revival, which was... I mean, if you like the sweeter ones, if you... If you smell caramel, if you smell sugar being melted in a pan, and, and that really floats your boat, man oh man, you are going to love the Revival whiskey because... It, it it's just like that. It's it's like freshly spun sugar. It it's so nice if you like that kind of smell. Um, it's nice. I like it. I would say I'm gonna. I'll probably come back to you in the comments and the description in this one if this is if this is under 40 quid I would I'd definitely recommend it I'd buy it if it's over 40 quid I'd have a think about it I think I could uh, I could pick out some better ones I'm not saying don't have it in your collection uh, that's something that you can bring out and share with friends and all the rest of it. But uh, for forty quid, yeah, I think I could. I think I could pick out some uh, some better ones and some better age statement ones as well for that that kind of money. Um, so yeah, well, thank you very much for joining me and for joining Glenn Glassick <laughs> this evening. Um, please, please, please subscribe if you have enjoyed my videos. Please subscribe on YouTube if you're on Facebook. Like I say. Head over to YouTube. I know you've got a Google account. Subscribe. Um, I'm just trying to reach the, the 500 mark so I can get that, that pretty URL, like I said. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Check me out on Instagram. Check me out on Facebook. And uh, cheers. Here's to you. Oops, I'll be better now. See, that's trouble with the Glen Cairns. You really gotta tip it up to get to the last little bit. You think you're finished, and then there's still that wee trouble there.